Before you record video with the Blackmagic app, the first thing you need to do is decide whether you want your shutter speed displayed as fractions of a second or as degrees. Proponents of the 180 degree shutter are probably going to want to see the latter. So at the bottom left corner, we have the good old settings cog. Tap that and then choose camera in the left menu. And about halfway down, we have the shutter measurement setting. By default, it's set to speed. So if you want to see degrees, then change this to angle. Why is it called angle? Well, because this comes from movie cameras that use a rotating shutter. You know, to be clear, I'm talking about cameras that shoot film. And the only way you can change the shutter speed is to change the angle of this rotating shutter. So we select angle and then tap camera to return to the main screen. We will now see that our shutter speed is displayed in degrees. And you get this little circle here, which is the degree symbol. So let's tap the shutter speed at the top and bring up the shutter speed controller. Like I say, if you want to use the 180 degree rule, just move this to 180 degrees. And to close this controller, tap the shutter speed again. And this is actually a good thing to remember when it comes to the Blackmagic UI. Tap to open and then tap again to close. So what you really don't want to do is to set your shutter speed and then tap the middle of the screen. Because yes, this does close the controller, but it also sets your exposure to match whatever you tapped on. So in other words, it totally ruins all the settings that you just spent time getting right. So instead, just press the button that you press to open the controller. For this video, which is a complete guide to using the Blackmagic app, I'm going to use the normal shutter speed display because it's basically what most people are used to and it's what I use anyway. So here's a quick tip. If you swipe up on the screen, you're going to get a clear preview without all the settings and meters. And then to get it back, you just swipe down again. Now that we've adjusted shutter speed, exposure is being set manually which means that shutter speed and ISO are not going to change again unless we do it ourselves, either by using the controller or by tapping on the screen. So how do we go back to auto exposure if we want to? Now on the right, you will find a plus minus button. Tap this to open the exposure value controller. Tap auto at the top so that it goes blue. Now auto exposure is switched back on. And you can tell this because there's a letter A beside shutter and ISO. So we can keep it in auto and adjust the EV value up or down. So this is useful if you want to use auto exposure, but you find that it's just a bit too dark or it's a bit too bright. And you can use the controller to adjust the EV up or down. Again, don't tap on the screen to close the EV control because then it's gonna switch exposure to manual and it'll set shutter and ISO. Instead, tap the EV button to close it. Now let's look at focus. The second button down on the right is the focus control. Tap it to open the focus slider. And really, this is, to my mind, the weakest part of the app. Now, firstly, it's not too good for recording focus balls because you can't swipe the whole range from maximum focus to minimum focus in one go. You have to do it in multiple movements and that's not too good for a smooth focus ball. And secondly, since early November, they've added this feature that they call haptic feedback to all the sliders. So haptic feedback means the controls are sticky and not smooth. You know, like when you're setting controls on a regular camera and it sort of sticks into place. But the problem is this also makes it harder to shoot focus balls because really you want this just to slide nice and easily and smoothly. You don't want to be sort of fighting against this sticky haptic feedback thing. So I, I do hope that Black Magic Design and remove this feature and just let the focus slide like every other app and also allow us to go the full range of focus in one movement. But that said, I have developed a way of doing this and later I'm going to show you how to shoot a focus pull with the Black Magic Camera app. Now you can add a focus speaking overlay and this is going to help make sure your focus is accurate. If we tap the button above the focus button, we open another menu and this menu allows us to add a series of overlays which can help set our controls and one of these is for focus and we know that it's for focus because it looks similar to the focus button except this button has a subject inside the box tap it and now you get a slider control 
and you get an on off button at the top. So we might get confused here and we might think this is the focus slider, but it's not. And if you slide it up and down, nothing seems to change. And this actually controls the intensity or you know the strength of the focus peaking overlay. So let's leave that control for now and enable focus peaking at the top and close the control by tapping the button again. You can see there's now a little white dot below the button and that tells us focus peaking is switched on. And that's the same for all these uh, little buttons here. If something is switched on, you're gonna see this little white dot below it. When we open the focus control again, we now get this red overlay. Everything red is in focus. And if we move focus, you can see the red moves as the focus moves. And we can also change the way the focus assist works. Just go into settings and then go to monitor. Here you can choose whether to use lines or peaking, and you can also change the color. Okay, so I think that gives you a good insight into how this app works. Now let's look closer at how the heads up display is laid out. Did you actually know that HUD stands for heads up display? I actually only just found that out. And apparently it comes from a pilot being able to view information with the head position looking up and looking forward. Anyway, so a sort of basic rule with this app is that whenever you want to kind of go back to recording video and you want the main camera preview window, just tap the camera button in the top right corner. In the top left corner, we have the camera picker. Here you can see the currently selected camera. At the moment, I have the main camera of my iPhone 15 Pro selected, which is the 24 millimeter equivalent. Tap it to bring up a menu containing all your available cameras. You can actually switch cameras while you're recording, but I did notice one little bug, because if you switch to the front camera while recording, well, at least this is what I get, I get an upside down video for the front camera, uh, while all the other cameras are the right way up. So I don't know why that is, uh, and I don't know if this affects all iPhones. Something to bear in mind if you want to record video and switch between front and rear cameras. Next along, we can see the app is currently set to shoot 30 frames per second. Tap that to open up the frame rate controller. You might notice that the Black Magic app has these weird settings like 29.97 frames per second. So what madness is this? You might be asking yourself. It's a bit weird, isn't it? Well, if you've used pro cameras or you worked for TV, you've probably already come across this 29.97 frames per second setting. And to cut a very long story short, it all comes down to how TV was invented in the 1940s. And I'm not going to go into that here. But yes, it is another hangover from the distant past that is still stuck with us. And it has no real use uh, for people that are just shooting video with their iPhones or smartphones. So basically, unless you have a specific reason for shooting at 29.97 frames per second, then you can forget this setting. And the same goes for the 23.98 and the 59.94 frames per second settings. And if you choose 1080p resolution, then you can now shoot up to 120 frames per second. So aside from that, the setting frame rate is pretty straightforward. Tap the current shutter speed to bring up the shutter speed controller. And by the way, if you want to get a deeper understanding of the six key camera settings, I've created a whole course on Patreon which you can access as a Video Creator Pro member. Next, we have our aperture or iris setting, which is grayed out because iPhone cameras have fixed apertures. However, this number does actually change depending on the selected camera. At the moment, it's f1.8 because that's the main camera aperture. And if I switch to the ultra wide, it now changes to f2.2. And the telephoto is f2.8. So I wouldn't say it's a totally redundant feature. I think it is useful to know what your aperture actually is. In the middle, we have the time code. And as soon as you tap the record button, the time will start ticking over. If we go into settings, we can change this to time of day. And now it's basically a clock and you can see the seconds ticking along before we're even recording. And personally, I'm just going to keep this in the regular time code format. Tap to open ISO settings, or ISO if you want to call it ISO. A general rule is to keep ISO as low as possible, uh, to keep the digital noise as low as possible. Tap white balance, and you can also set this manually. Use the slider or one of the presets on the right of the slider. And white balance is made up of color temperature, 
measured in kelvins and tint, and they can both be set manually by tapping on them. The happy medium option for white balance, if you don't want to keep setting it exactly each time, is you just go into settings and toggle on lock white balance on record. So I think you should always have that uh, toggled on. And that way you don't need to spend time setting it because it will be set automatically. But as soon as you press that record button, it's going to be locked. So it's not going to change during the shot. And that's kind of the most important thing, really. But like I say, if you're not sure about these things, you can take my course, which includes how to use white balance, and it's going to set you straight. In the left bottom corner, we have a histogram which shows you the red, green, blue, and luminosity levels from shadows to highlights. Bottom right is the audio meter. So if you tap this, you get audio levels in the middle of the screen. And there's a gain level slider here, which only works if you have an external microphone plugged in and you can use it to adjust the gain of the external microphone. In the middle, we have remaining storage space for the current video settings. So that's gonna change, you know, if you change to a different codec, if you change to a different resolution, this will change. And it's displayed as a percentage, as time, you know, like the amount of time of video that you could shoot, and as gigabytes. So you can actually remove the histogram, the audio meter, and the remaining storage space displays in settings, and then go to monitor and toggle them on or off as you prefer. And here you can also actually add a battery level meter for your iPhone, and it's gonna appear next to the tint setting. So let's look at some other key settings. So when we want to control the quality of the video, you know, things like resolution, codecs, LUTs, and color spaces, we need to go to settings. Tap the settings cog at the bottom. We now have a menu with headings on the left. And the one we want is the record settings. So if we tap that and on the right, we now have headings for codecs, resolution and so on. So let's do resolution. So iPhones actually have three resolutions available in this app or even using your native app. So 4K is the highest, HD, which is 1080p, and the lowest is 720p. And personally, I always try to shoot everything in 4K if possible. In the top right corner of the preview screen, you're gonna find the current resolution setting. And unfortunately, you can't just tap it to change it like you can with the other settings. For codecs, we have H.264 and H.265. H.264 is the older codec, which on the downside creates bigger files, but on the plus side, it's more compatible and it might be slightly easier for editing. And this is because more processing power is required to play H.265 files because the compression process is more complex. So I generally shoot in H.265 and then export my videos in H.264 because YouTube sometimes seems to have issues with H.265. So if you have a ProRes supporting iPhone, you'll also get a list of ProRes codecs. Apple ProRes 422HQ is the highest quality that you can shoot with an iPhone, but it also creates the biggest files. Then there's regular ProRes 422 and 422 Lite, which is more compressed and it creates smaller files, but obviously it carries less image information. Apple ProRes 422 Proxy is an even more highly compressed codec than Apple ProRes 422LT, and it's intended for use in offline workflows that require low data rates but full resolution video. But, you know, it's still going to contain more image information than H.264 and H.265. The other thing is that editing systems should also have an easier time working with Apple ProRes when you compare it to working with H.264 and H.265 files. What you have available in this menu, in the color space menu, is going to depend on your model of iPhone. The regular format is Rec. 709. And this is what you normally see when you're streaming TV shows, movies, and so on. But if you have an iPhone 12 or later, you should have the Rec. 2020 HDR option, which is basically the same as the Dolby Vision setting on your iPhone. Now, since uh, iOS 10, iPhones have been able to capture video in the P3 D65 color space. So what's this about? Well, simply put, if you've never heard of P3 D65, then you're probably not gonna need it. 
But finally, we have the Apple Log setting, which is only going to be available for iPhone 15 Pro and later models. So Apple Log is the only setting on an iPhone which allows you to have full manual control because otherwise you've got this dynamic tone mapping which is controlling different areas of the image and you cannot override that no matter if you switch to a manual app and you start setting ISO and shutter speed exactly as you want it parts of the image will be boosted by this dynamic tone mapping so if you want this full manual control then use Apple Log of course it also allows you to shoot in this ACES log format which is good if you want to spend time color grading your video. And I've made a whole video about using Apple Log already on this channel, so check that out if you want to know more. So in case you don't know, LUTs stand for lookup table. Again, there's a long history behind LUTs, but I'm not gonna go into that here. In settings, open the LUT tab. Here, we can set the Blackmagic camera app to use a LUT for display, or we can set it to burn the LUT into the recorded video. And here we can also select LUTs and we can import LUTs into the Blackmagic app. Toggle on display LUT if you want a LUT to be applied to your preview monitor. So for example, we might have it set to Apple Log and what we then get is this gray washed out image. With a display LUT applied, the monitor is gonna show how the video will look once we have applied a LUT to it. Or we can just simply use it to give us an idea of what it's gonna look like after grading. Now you can actually also switch this display LUT on or off back in the camera preview. Open the monitor control menu and at the bottom tap the LUT button. And you can enable or disable it with the on off button. So that's gonna save you from having to go into settings each time. So if you want video clips that look exactly as you see them in the preview with the LUT applied, toggle on record LUT to clip. So why would we wanna do that? Isn't the whole point of shooting in log so we can color grade it later? Well, this is true, but there is a reason why you might want to burn it in. And that's because, as I said, recording Apple Log is the only way to switch off the dynamic tone mapping in the iPhone. And if this is your only reason for using this format, uh, so you're not going to spend hours grading, then baking in a LUT is going to save you time. The Blackmagic app now comes with the Apple Log to Rec 709 LUT pre-installed. And this is a basic LUT which doesn't really do anything except to make your log footage look, you know, normal. And you can use it for preview or obviously you can burn it on. To import your own LUT, tap LUT selection, then import LUT. Now find the LUT that you want to import on your iPhone, wherever you've stored it. This is one by one LUT and it turns your Aces Apple Log into something resembling the look of an Ari Alexa. And in the description of this video, I'm going to leave a link to that LUT. You do have to purchase it. It is pretty cool. I do like the look of it myself. If you're interested, check out the description and follow the link. Below the record button, we have a button to open stabilization settings. And we can set it to off, standard, cinematic and extreme. Using stabilization crops into the frame a little bit. So if we switch off stabilization, we will get more screen space. Standard is usually good enough for most situations, but I do recommend that you try the other settings and uh, just to see what you get. So I just noticed something about how this uh, extra levels of stabilization work, at least in my phone anyway. Um, so if I have the preview LUT enabled, then I do get this latency. As soon as I hit the record button, um, you get this sort of delay as it applies the, the this extra stabilization while you're filming. Uh, if I don't have the LUT enabled, then it doesn't apply the stabilization when I'm filming and it sort of seems to apply it afterwards. So you might not actually notice that any stabilization is being applied until you watch the recorded video. And that's actually how the action mode works in the regular iPhone app as well you won't notice the stabilization until you watch it back. Below the stabilization button is the zoom button. So this is a digital zoom, and the further you go, the less pixels you're gonna have available, and then you start to get this lower quality video. And you can actually zoom up to eight times magnification using these presets, or you can manually adjust the zoom by scrolling the scale up to 15 times. The Blackmagic app allows you to apply a variety of grids and guides to assist you when you're framing, focusing and setting exposure. 
The zebra display will draw diagonal lines over areas of your image that have excessive exposure level. Essentially, we're just talking about blown out highlights. And the slider allows you to adjust the way it looks so that it fits the exposure level that you want to achieve. Tap the rule of thirds grid button to open a new menu. And we now have four options. So if you want, you can actually enable them all at the same time. Or you can choose the best combination that suits you. The top one is the good old rule of thirds grid. Next down opens up a vertical or horizontal crosshair. So when the crosses go blue, you know that your phone is perfectly horizontal or vertical. So for example, this might be useful for doing those top down shots of your food or whatever. There's, there's a simple cross and a simple dot to indicate the exact center of the frame. The next button applies frame guides. And these aren't going to appear in your final video. They're just to guide you if you intend to crop your video when you come to editing. So this one just adds a top and bottom screen guides and you can set it to standard ratios. It'll put a line as if you're cropping the top and bottom. Uh, for example, 2.39 to 1 is a commonly used aspect ratio in cinema. Next up is the safe area guide button and you can use this to ensure important image information does not get too close to the edge of the screen. For example, it might otherwise be cut off when viewed on a consumer grade television. And you can adjust the size of this with the slider, so it's just up to you if you want to use this and where you want to set the safe area. Next button allows you to enable a false color overlay. And this uses different colors to represent different exposure values. Pink represents optimum exposure for lighter skin tones, while green is actually good for darker skin tones. And meanwhile, red is overexposed. So this slate lets you add additional details such as shot type or project name, and you can swipe left or right to change the pages. So below the camera button, we have the media button. And this is your gallery where you're going to find all your recorded media. So you're not going to find your videos in the regular iPhone Photos app unless you tell the app to place it there. So this is how you do that. You just go back into settings, media, and then tap Save Clips to and choose In-App and Photo Library. And now it's going to be saved both to the Blackmagic app and to your iPhone Photos app. Now, if you have a DaVinci Resolve and you have a Blackmagic subscription, which includes cloud storage, you can sign in here and you can have your media uploaded automatically to a project which you have created in Resolve. And that way you can open the Resolve project and your files, they're just going to be there uh, ready to edit and you won't have to import them or anything. And it's also useful if you've got someone else editing, if you're working in a big team and uh, someone's waiting for the footage, ready to edit, you can be on location shooting, the clips automatically upload and they can start editing straight away while you're still filming. But uh, I guess that's quite a specialist thing and I think that most people using this app aren't going to be using that feature. Aside from all that, tap on a file to view it. Now, if you tap on the I button, you're going to see all the information regarding the video clip and swipe to scroll down and you're going to find the data you created using this slate that I showed you in the previous section. So another thing you can do is tap the heart button to favorite a clip and this could save you time later when you want to find the best takes. If you've done a take and uh, you think this is a good one, then favorite it so that you can find it easier later. Tap the share button to send your file as you would with the regular iPhone Photos app. A focus pull is basically a shot where you move the focus while you're recording. And so essentially you want to record the focus changing. And this is going to lead the viewer's eyes from one subject to another subject. First of all, get an idea of the two points that you want to move between. Start recording and then flick the focus control so it moves on its own. Then tap and hold the control when you want it to stop. So like I say, it's not really ideal, but this is my way of sort of getting over the issues that Blackmagic have created with the way that they've designed the focus slider. It does take a little bit of practice, but unless Blackmagic makes focus easier to work with, we do need some kind of workaround to make focus pulls. Now, if you have an iPhone 15 Pro or Pro Max and you're recording big ProRes files, 
then you probably want to consider recording directly to an external drive. And this is how. Connect the drive, open the Blackmagic app, go to settings, then media and save clips to. Choose files and then navigate to your external drive. Find a folder that you want to save the files to and then tap open. And you should now have a check mark beside files and the folder name to the right. Now when you hit record, any files created are going to be saved directly to this folder on the external drive. And you should be able to edit directly from this drive if it's fast enough. And you know, this means that you don't have to worry about transferring files. You just unplug from the iPhone, plug it into your computer, import the files directly from the external drive folder into your editing software, and off you go. No having to wait for large files to transfer from one drive to another. So there's a few more settings under the camera menu that are worth looking at, I think. At the top, we can enable vertical video. And if this is off, the Blackmagic app is going to shoot horizontal video even when you hold the phone vertically. But actually, if you try to record 4K video this way, you're not going to get it. You will get a reduced resolution. If you're filming artificial lights and you're getting strobing or flickering, you can try using the anti-flicker shutter speed setting. This is going to force your shutter speed to use multiples of 50 or 60 depending on what you set here. So 50 hertz for Europe, 60 hertz for USA. And if you live somewhere else or you're filming somewhere else, you need to look up the electricity supply frequency for your country. It's going to be either 50 or 60 hertz. Lens correction is the same as the equivalent in your iPhone camera settings. And it's just going to straighten out any lens distortion you get. So you can avoid those bendy lines. So it's purely a creative decision, you know, some people want the bendy lines, some people don't. And there's no rule which says that lines mustn't bend or anything. We also have the anamorphic de-squeeze setting. So if you're using an anamorphic conversion lens, you can use this setting to see the frame de-squeezed in the preview. But it's also going to bake this in so that you'll get video which fits the 1.33 times or the 1.55 times aspect ratio. The flip image for SR lens is to be used when you're adding a depth of field adapter, such as the one made by Beast Grip. So there's a number of settings to do with audio. For example, if you want to record your audio via an external mic connected to your iPhone, you can set that here. Tap audio source, and if you have a connected mic, it should show up here, and then you can select it. The iPhone microphone setting allows you to choose between the different mics that are built in to your iPhone. So in my case, I can choose between the back, the bottom mic, and the front mics. Below that, you can choose the audio format, and I just keep this as AAC. Record audio as allows you to record audio in different ways. So you've got mono, which means you'll get the same audio across both the left and the right channels. Stereo just creates a standard stereo recording. Dual mono means that you have two tracks of audio, but they can be different. So it's not like a stereo recording. Instead, this will be used to record separate microphones on separate tracks, for example. So usually when we're recording two people talking, we want to keep each person's audio separate for easier treatment when we're editing. And there's also an option for four channel recording here, presumably for use with a four mic setup. Although I haven't actually tried this myself. And sample rate, you're most likely going to want to keep on auto or 48 kilohertz. The way the Blackmagic app allows you to record a time lapse is a little bit different to other systems. Go to settings, record, and toggle on time lapse recording. So now you can see how often you want a frame to be captured in this big long list. So first you can choose between two and 10 frames. So that's a little bit different, isn't it? I've never actually seen that before, but my guess is that if you choose one of these settings, it will record one frame of video for every two to 10 normal frames. Uh, so it's kind of like a time setting. So every two frames would be two times speed, every three frames would be three times speed, and so on up to 10 times. Apart from that, you have settings in seconds and minutes. You can record a frame of video every one second up to every 10 minutes. 
So we can do a little bit of maths here, just to give you some idea. A frame captured every second, played back at 30 frames per second, would obviously equal 30 times faster than normal speed. And going right to the other end, a frame captured every 10 minutes would be 600 times faster than every one second. So doing the maths again, 30 times 600 equals 18,000 times faster than normal speed. That's the equivalent of 144 frames per day, which would be roughly five seconds of video. So what would you use this for? So maybe something like a time lapse of a building being built where you want it to stretch over weeks or even months. Mm -hmm.